Welcome. Oh, you can't We're see late. my face. It's my fault. Ah, it was my fault, too. It, there's a lot of faults to go around here. We'll just say it's everybody's fault. Welcome, everybody. It is January 8th. This is Sunday, and this is the Sunday show, a show where theists and atheists get together on calls and talk, and then annoying people try to jump into the live chat and have their own little show but not call in because they're pretty cowardly. Uh, and then whine about like, well, you won't have just a written debate with me back and forth. That was what was happening before the show. Cause you want to be able to handle a written debate. And I am literally showing up anonymously and have shown you no reason to trust me with a platform. And yet here I am. Uh, and so, yeah, anyway, uh, <laughs> this is, it, it, it it's, it's going to be a fun day. We already have some calls lined up. I think we have at least one line open. We're having some issues with call screening, so we may have to do some things on the fly as we do it if they don't get resolved. But for the moment, uh, we've got some calls ready to go. I want to say at the beginning of the show, because I keep forgetting to mention it during the show and also the beginning is the best time, if you are interested in a future uh, podcast version of any show from the line, the number one way you can achieve that is by supporting on Patreon. One of the first priorities once Patreon support has garnered enough is for us to hire uh, an audio engineer or producer to be able to put that together well because, the fun fact, just moving a YouTube to a podcast is a difference in audio quality that people notice, and if you just do it straight across, they don't listen because it sounds like shit in comparison when you're audio only, you got the headphones in. I don't know. It's, it's not, it's not good. But anyway, so that's uh, the number one way it's support us over on Patreon. There's a link down in the description. Welcome Matt Dillahunty. How are you today? I'm doing good. I'm watching chat. There's a lot of cool stuff going on in chat. I want to acknowledge a couple of things. One of them is that I told some people I was late cause I was sorting rats and, um, uh, we had an individual uh, who thought they were being very clever. And in fact, they were saying, you're a rat. You aren't. You're a rat. You aren't. Yes, I was not quite sorry. I was sorting them by weight uh, at this particular point. Dargendorf said the show's late. So unprofessional. Fire your producer. That's true. Um, I, I'm down with that. Uh, <laughs> except that if there wasn't a producer, the show wouldn't be on at all. Like I would have forgotten and been downstairs. Uh, it's a good deal. And uh, Luna Dansko says that Brazil is having a January 6th coup right now. Yeah, evidently, uh, I only saw a brief news article before I went back to work, and that was the Bolsonaro acolytes are trying to overthrow the government. Yeah, it doesn't bode well for the next election and what happens if... Uh, it's like there's no good outcome. Either the Democrats will win, and then it's still just just moderate, really, that is going to run the country. But then also whatever the January 6th version 2 is going to be in America uh, yeah. or Republicans will win. And I don't think I need to explain why that one will suck. I think a couple other gets chat it. things real quick. Uh, Jared Jarebear Fuller, who evidently I was monumentally rude to, according to somebody else, but not according to Jared, uh, said, well, rats. And uh, somebody else says, I'm bald. That's perfectly uh, understood and cyberhex wants to know what's the over under for a manual today so well uh, is it's what a done are, deal what are we asking are we asking the over under on whether or not a manual will call or whether or not a manual will successfully convince us of a theistic argument um, yeah the, the over under is zero yeah and and so i'll take the over yeah I'm uh, I'm actually willing to just jump straight to that because I, I I'm probably so, going to take it away that Emmanuel's not expecting. Uh, so we have I, Emmanuel. I'm going to let's do this. Let's do it this way. Since Emmanuel and I don't always do well, I'll just sit back here quietly and take down notes to see if I can calmly and quietly come up with very specific questions that might lead us toward clarity. Let's let's see if we can start see this new year right. I think you don't know. I I. I I, I have different plans for the call, but we'll try. Emmanuel, first of all, are you here? Yes, uh, I am here. Okay, good. So here's Can you the, hear me perfectly? Uh, yeah, right now you're fine. I heard you had issues earlier on uh, on one of the shows you called into, but you're good right now. Uh, mm -hmm. Emmanuel, okay. I, ha I, I have to ask. I know that okay. you called Talk Heathen earlier today. Uh, I believe you called our show oh. Wednesday. I think you called our show Monday, and I think you called our show last Sunday. I think you call every yeah. show that's going on. Now, in your own screening, today you said the God of the Gaps theory is a good argument. And in past screenings, you've said okay. slavery is good and under biblical circumstances. And here's the question I, I have okay. for you, because one of two things I think is happening, and I want you to identify which. 
One, you're not good at okay. using Google. So you have these thoughts in your head and you don't bother because I've had now like a dozen experiences with you and heard you on even more calls than that. You don't bother to just Google your own argument and see how other people's engaged it ever clear. I, I feel like that's not ever happening. So you are calling us asking us to do what Google should be doing for you. And, and, and I'm not even saying you couldn't engage in the gods of a gaps argument that would make you seem reasonable as in, oh, I at least get why this guy thinks this. But the thing is, is I've taken your calls so much that I know what you're about to say is going to be the most cliche basic versions in defense of the arguments of God of the gap. So I think option one is you're bad at using Google. You don't want to do it. And you think it's a better use of time to call us and let us do your Googling for you. Or two, there's something you think you get out of being a sort of unofficial, always calls in co-host on this show. And maybe you have a thought in your head that if even one person who's listening thinks, well, you know, Emmanuel might have gotten shut down, but I still like his message and his and his proselytization. And, and that there's something going on where you think this is some type of missionary work. Because I truly cannot conceptualize a way where with the nature of the calls you've come in with, that you actually believe, I guess option three, that you are good at debating this and you are showing anybody the truth of anything. So you tell me which one it is. Or if I, if there's some other option, I, I, I'm really Emmanuel. What I'm desperate for is an answer to the question: What is the fucking point of us doing this again? Okay, so I would say none of those are the reason why I keep calling into this agnostic or skeptic shows. It's just deep down, what I believe is I don't have a lot of time to be in this body, so. I think I have a very few time, uh, a very less years, you know. So that's why I'm trying to give out my argument because I don't have, I don't think I have more time. Because, but, but uh, you, you know, just said it, it's not either of those. And then you basically said it was option two, which is you want to use the time oh, you sorry. have on this earth, not to call, because you've already said you can't change your mind, right? You've already acknowledged that there's nothing we can say well, I, I, that would change your mind about Christianity. You're in and nothing's going to change it. So you're not calling to have an honest oh, conversation or debate, right? No, no, no. I'm trying to have an honest debate. I want to really know your point of view because no, I'm no, no, kind no. of like But I don't care if you want to know my point of view. Yeah. I want to know whether or not your point of view is changeable with evidence. I don't care if you just want to hear I, what I have changeable. to say. It's, it's changeable. You've but, said multiple but times it my, isn't, but my, we'll try. So the God of the gaps so, theory is a good argument. Why? Let me, well, hang on. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Matt. Oh, yeah. hey, Manuel. Sorry, Manuel. Um, let's say you had some money that you wanted to invest. Okay. <clears throat> okay? Yeah. Yes. And I, I wrote a piece of software that would make stock tips, give you stock tips. And if I showed you that this piece of software had never given a good stock tip, a stock tip that made money, but had once or twice or several times produced a stock tip that lost money, would you want to use that tool? Uh, absolutely not. Abs absolutely not. That's great. So when we have a gap in our knowledge, God of the gaps is this position of saying, hey, we don't understand how we did it, so we're justified in saying God did it. But in the entirety of human history, every time we've tried by saying God did it, either that has been proved wrong and it was something else, or it hasn't yet yeah. been proven correct. And so God, the God of the gaps, is identical to the piece of software that you said you would absolutely not use because it has never been demonstrated that it got the answer right, but it has been demonstrated that it got the answer wrong. Why on earth would you say that the God of the gaps is a good thing and the thing that is directly analogous to us as a stock tip is something you would never use? Okay, so, so I think there's a difference between a theory and a fact so yes, God there of the is, gaps but what's it have to do with what I asked? 
Oh, so I would agree that what you uh, I absolutely agree with what you just said. You know, God so of the God, you're opposed God, to God of the God. No, uh, no, I'm not because I think it it makes a you know even though it's not a fact. And we cannot use it as an evidence. I think we could just like it makes a lot of sense. It gives a lot of uh, Emmanuel. Uh, Emmanuel, I, I'm I'm really desperate here because I I thought about it and I came up with an analogy. And you understood yeah. that if you were trying to invest your money, the tool that never demonstrated that it could get it right, but has demonstrated that it could get it wrong, is something you would never use. But when you're trying to invest your belief you're willing to use a tool that has never demonstrated that it got it right, but has demonstrated that it got it wrong. You are engaged in a very special form, a very special pleading, where you, you exercise reason on investing your money, and you throw reason out the window and use the exact same unreliable tool methodology when it comes to understanding the rest of reality. How, how can that make sense? Yeah, it's just that, you know, uh, Matt, I think, uh, you know, what's on the line, what, what's the other side of the line if I did not believe in God? And let's say I don't believe in God exists, or let's say I don't think, you know, the Christian God exists. What's on the line is like eternal punishment, right? So no, sir. It's better, no, sir. It's better. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. What's on the line is the one and only life that you know you have. You don't know if there's an eternal anything. You don't know if there's an eternal punishment. What's on the line is living this life right. Do you give a shit whether or not your beliefs are true? Uh, I, I, I do. I, I, okay. I do okay. care Stop. about whether or not beliefs. Stop. 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 It's a yes or no question. If you care about whether or not your beliefs are true, then you should use the best methodology to determine what you should believe, correct? Yes. Why would you then say that the God of the gaps, which is not the best methodology to, to, to understand reality, it's never proven to be right, and it has many times proven to be wrong, so it cannot be the best tool for understanding reality. How can you simultaneously say that you care about whether or not you, what you believe is true, and that you're willing to go with God of the gaps, which does not have any demonstration of any truthful reliability. Uh, it's because the people that I think are very factually correct or people that I think are really smart and intellectual have used the God of the gaps and I've read their books. No, they fucking haven't. No, they matter. fucking haven't. No, that is, the, that is the stupidest thing I've heard. I mean, smart people are not using unreliable method mechanisms. Yeah. Smart people aren't. I mean, yes, smart people can make mistakes. But when you say the smartest people use this, that's just not fucking true. If yeah, you care, yeah, I can it, no, you sir, no, sir, I'm still. If you care about whether or not your beliefs are true, then you should use the most reliable methods for determining those beliefs. And you are sitting here arguing that there's a completely unreliable method that has never demonstrated any reliability and that you're fine with it because you think smart people have used it. How do you know what a fucking smart person is? Uh, I mean, they, there are, for example, I know people who have a very deep knowledge on physics and a deep knowledge on theology, history that have used the same argument. Uh, uh, that that is similar. I don't to the care. Of the gaps. I don't care whether wh whether or not you find people who you think are smart who've used it. The issue is: is the method reliable? And you've already admitted that it's not. No, it's not actually. But yes. the reason why I believe in God. Hang on, I'm going to pop in. Emmanuel, I'm going to pop in because here's the thing, man. We've now given you 10 minutes, which is about eight minutes more than I intended to. Uh, uh, no, I'm not mad at you, Matt. I just it, 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 literally no, I, I had this sort of what the point question at the beginning and I'm sitting and listening and going, Matt and I have both made God of the Gaps videos. You could have typed in Matt Dillahunty, God of the Gaps, or Jimmy Snow, God of the Gaps. You'd have found our videos, and you would have realized why the things you said today are stupid, and maybe made your God of the Gaps argument better. And then you came out with Pascal's Wager, both of which we've made videos on. And this is what I was saying, is you are an incompetent Googler. 
Because at the end of the day, I think you're just here to waste time and slightly proselytize, or it's something you enjoy or it's entertaining. And I don't really want to take no. it's not personal, man, because I don't hate you. Sometimes I even enjoy, enjoy doing no. our calls, but I do care about my yeah. audience and I feel like we are wasting their time with bombs. Yes. I don't even think it takes Matt or I. I think virtually any person who's been a skeptic for about 45 minutes can poke holes in your arguments and handle your calls. So please engage with my audience and us with a little bit more, I dare say, respect by actually going and doing the homework and not saying stupid things in defense of already bad arguments. Because even the people who call in, for example, uh, uh, shit, what's his, Mark, he calls in, he's baked Alaska in chat. Ma Mark makes God of the gap arguments, but he dresses them up better and is prepared for some level of arguments back uh, and then we point out this is still God of the gaps. And you're literally thinking that intellectuals are saying the phrase God of the gaps like it wasn't created as an insult. That phrase is a, is degrading. Like it's not a phrase of it. it I don't, I don't know how else it to is put literally it. the name a of joke. a fallacy essentially. Right. It, it is. You might as well be saying, Oh, I think arguments from incredulity are sound. They, yeah. You can't. I don't care if you think that it is factually incorrect and God of the gaps is what we just use to describe when someone with no justification ascent attempts to insert a God in a gap in our knowledge without any justification that it cannot be reasonable. It can't, it is impossible for it to be reasonable. And the fact that you don't understand this disqualifies you from discussing this stuff about reasonable because you cannot simultaneously say you care about what's true you recognize that this tool in any other context would be not reliable and then say, but in the God thing, I'm going to go with it. That doesn't fucking work. You are in exactly. a state of cognitive dissonance. You are, you are going to lose your mind trying to reconcile things that are irreconcilable. I'm done talking. For sure. Yeah. Emmanuel, I'm going to give you one little response here to basically say, I'm going to go words. and do the work and I'm going to put effort in and I'm not going to call your next week or two of shows because it's going to take me time to make a good argument. Because here's here's what I'm going to tell you, Emmanuel. If I see you calling any atheist call in show for two weeks, I won't Which take I won't. you on this show. That's all right, because I he can, he can call those other shows. No, I, I'm saying I won't take him if he calls those other shows because he's not doing the work if he's doing it. This is a general type of work. If Matt decides to take you, Matt can take you. I won't take you because people tell I me. I won't take him today. People tell me. Exactly. Yeah, people tell me when you're calling in these other shows. So I'm going to tell you this. If you don't take two weeks off to get better at this and come with a, a, a fucking argument that makes any sense, you're not getting on this show. All right, Emmanuel, go ahead. You got your last words and we're letting you go. Okay, so uh, I'll, uh, I'll, first of all, I don't believe in God because of the God of the gaps, but my personal experience. Uh, the, I did not say we're going to start the argument over. I said you can say goodbye, basically, and acknowledge whether or not you okay. heard what I just said. Okay, I've heard what you just said. Great. Thank, Thank you, you, Emmanuel. Jimmy. Cool. Okay. I think that's entirely fair because. We've already been letting him on virtually every show. And at this point, we're either going to keep wasting people's time or he's going to get better at it. That's those are the options. Uh, this is an interesting call. We're going to talk to Rich in or Oregon, who uh, said he is mm. functionally atheist. But uh, well, I'll let you explain it. You're a theist and an atheist. Yes. Uh, no, you're not. Hey, Matt, are you <laughs> I'm four, eight, four years back from the same surgery you just had. Uh, awesome. It's good to see you there. Uh, I'm, very cool. I'm doing well. I'm glad you're doing well, too, sir. Yep. Yeah, so I got Parkinson's now. Too. Anyway, that, that, I, that I one there's no surgery there. for, but... Yeah. Anyway, uh, I was reading Dietrich Bonhoeffer, and he uh, puts a dot of the gap to, to bed in his 1943 book. Uh, letters and papers from prison. Anyway, he was talking about a religionless Christianity where I've been living that out as a kind of functioning as an atheist, but philosophically, I got this nagging thing in the back of my head that still thinks that there may be a God out there, but 
You know, we're supposed to live our lives as grown-ups taking responsibility for our own lives as if there's no God. That's what Bonhoeffer wrote just before he was executed by the Nazis. And and are you yeah, saying you've he, adopted uh, the same position? That? What's that? Are you saying you've adopted the same position? What is the question? They're similar. Uh, Bonhoeffer said, mankind has grown up and does not need the God hypothesis anymore. Yeah, and, but Bonhoeffer uh, so was I'm, still obsessed. But Bonhoeffer was still obsessed with the Christ. It, it, it's yeah, this is true. Yeah, and I find Christ to be a disgusting, repulsive figure that I have no reason to build my life around. Um, so I have no interest in Bonhoeffer's. You know, when he said, "Oh, it's religious Christianity," well, that's a non sequitur. It's, it's still religion. He's just invented his own, or he not just because he's dead, but he had just invented his own version of Christianity, which is still a life centered on Christ um, for, a, for a suffering God, which isn't biblical, and for which there is no evidence, and for which even Bonhoeffer, I'm not convinced, um, strongly believed was a real thing. He's almost like a Jordan Peterson, where he's, he's talking about metaphorical substrate in some regards, not w with that particular language. And so I have absolutely no use for Bonhoeffer's theology or anybody else's theology, because I give a shit about what's real. Thank you. Uh, I want to get to a viewpoint on that. Sure. I mean, I as, as, as far as the nagging feeling goes that I know a lot of people have, it, it's not anything more uh, uh, exciting to me than a great many things that society tricks us into thinking and, and feels like a part of, we all grew up with religion and surrounded by religion. We were all always told there is a God. Your choices at first aren't whether God exists or not. It's which version of God are you going to believe in? Atheism wasn't even presented to me as an option for for most of my religious life. A couple of years ago, my dad, who is in his 60s and should be entirely embarrassed by this, when I asked him what would change his mind about a God, he said is if, if God himself showed himself to my dad and told him he was wrong. And I was like, cool, you've said the only thing that could change your mind is something that couldn't happen if he doesn't exist, you idiot. Uh, uh, it, it's, it's, it, culturally, people have these things stuck in their head and they work really, really hard to keep them nagging at the back of their head. Uh, and you probably believe in lots of things that are wrong like that cracking your knuckles lead to arthritis or that Maroon 5 is a good band. Yeah. yeah I'll leave you with a little story that I picked up from King Joseph's rabbi. He says, why did God create atheists? Have you heard that? Yes, I've heard the story. Okay. Well, let's leave it that then. Yeah, it's the whole thing about to challenge the faith and all that stuff. It's 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 also very stupid. But I know when people first hear the story, they think it's very cute. But it still presumes that God actually exists and is very silly. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you for taking me. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Rich. Have a good one. Hey, for people getting mad in the uh, chat, I also am wrong, but think that Maroon 5 is a good band. I'm saying all of us have these these shortfalls. Uh, either call look more interesting to you as we wait for more. We do have at least one line open. We'd love to talk to some more theists. We've got a theist and an atheist call waiting on the line. We've got a call screening. So if you'd like to call in that number, let's see if I have the right names up. I do. Uh, 720-619-2288. There is a link in the description if you want to call via web caller. If you call in, do not have us on speakerphone. Please don't. Really, just straight into the phone would be best. Hold up to your ear. Uh, uh, I guess a good Bluetooth headset is fine, but a Bluetooth speaker or car phone, not fine. Uh, yeah, which, which, which one are you thinking there, Matt? I'm good with you. Cool. We'll take... Uh, we've talked to Wildman Chris before. We'll try again here. Wild man Chris Hello. in North Carolina. How you doing? Uh, okay. Done better than worse. Good. Good, good. Let's talk about uh, prophecies that will be fulfilled. Okay, so here's the thing I'm going to tell you. We're not probably going to just let you talk about what prophecies are coming. We'll let you talk about why we should give a crap as though anything prophesied before 
came true because of the prophecy and wasn't obscure bullcrap. Well, hang on. I, I don't want I don't want to front load this too much because I don't know. I mean, Chris, yeah. are you are you planning on telling us about prophecies that have been fulfilled or ones that will be fulfilled? Because it says will be in the thing. Uh, one, uh, one that has, one that has. Then, then why does and it say prophecies? Had... Why, why, why does it say prophecies that will be fulfilled in the Nicola notes? Well, guys, if this prophecy, I have to explain, but if this prophecy came true in the way it did, maybe the prophecy about Tyr and Sidon will come true in a way. You always talk about the false prophecy of Tyr and Sidon. Yeah, so here's the thing. I have zero interest in you telling me about future prophecies that will come true. I only want to know about prophecies that have come true. And so I do, I'm going to ask, I, I, hang on, hang on. Do you have a prophecy that you think has come true? Yes. Okay. I'm going to ask you a couple questions. When was this prophecy made? Jeremiah 59. That's not Jeremiah a win. That's not, that's not a win. When was this prophecy made? Uh, a few thousand years ago. <laughs> okay. When did it come true? The Gulf War, 1991. 1991. And so when you when you take me to where this prophecy is written, it's going to specifically mention 1991 and the Gulf War? No. Then how on earth can you pretend that a prophecy has come true? Because a prophecy yes. needs to be specific, not prone to interpretation, and answerable by a single circumstance. So are you telling me that you found something that doesn't mention 1991 or the, or the Gulf War, and you're going to claim that, that it was fulfilled then. What are the specifics that got fulfilled? Okay, it's talking about the nation of Babylon and uh, how the, the, heirs are, the heirs of the man, the mighty expert men, none of them return in vain. And for the longest time, people were saying that prophecy never happened when Babylon was destroyed by the Medes and the Persians. But then the Gulf War came along, and uh, an assembly of North nations, that was North America and uh, Brit uh, Britain, all those nations, and uh, the Arabs, none of them returned in vain. That was uh, Tomahawk cruise missiles. Okay, I, I'm not taking your call, nor am I speaking to you, nor do I plan to have another conversation with you for the rest of the time I'm on this show. Um, I am absolutely exhausted. Either you are a monumental troll or you are beyond our ability to help because I was very clear in order for there to be a viable prophecy, there has to be something written down that is specific and answerable by a single set of circumstances. I am not interested in when you put your tinfoil hat on and when you start scouring around the internet. I'm not interested in how you think you found something that makes sense. That's not what prophecy is. That's not how you prove prophecy is fulfilled. It is not a reasonable endeavor. It is tinfoil hat bullshit, and I'm done wasting our audience's time on it. Thanks so much, Wild Man, Chris. Wait, 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 wait a minute. I got proof. No, I no, got there's no, proof. there's no wait. There's no Are wait. You Thank you. Done? There's no wait. You Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. It's just, it's just bad arguments. It's, I, I'm, I'm. At this point, I I'd don't be excited want, to talk to a precept. Jesus Christ. I don't want the Sunday show to be the laughing stock of call-in shows because we only get the batshit crazy idiots who are calling in to say, oh, this passage in Jeremiah was answered in Babylon. There is no Babylon. Right. Right. And, and such and such was cruise missiles. And by the way, I'd prefer theists that know there isn't a Jeremiah 59. Yeah. Because he's definitely talking about Jeremiah 51. There is no Jeremiah 59. Uh, anyway, right. we'll, try, uh, we'll try Joshua in Indiana. Joshua, you are on the line. How, how are you doing today, Jimmy? I'm a big fan of June Matts. Thanks. And I am called. We don't I'm, care. I'm, I'm like we West. don't care. We don't care, I'm, Joshua. Shut up. I don't want to talk to people. Who, oh, I'm just kidding. That's fine with you. Uh, well, no, no, no. You're fine. You're fine. <laughs> um, <I'm, laughs> um what is unlike the last two callers i actually did my homework so that's why i'm on your guys' side with with this argument and or thing we're gonna talk about and or bring up um and i, I just want to jump right into it if you guys don't don't mind me go, going for it um 
In October, there was an investigative reporter named Olivia Raisner that visited uh, five anti-abortion crisis pregnancy center clinics, which undeemably they ironically want to call that health care in my state of Indiana. I'm a ex-resident of Michigan, a Mich- fellow Michigander, so that's how I found out about Matt. Um, but uh, they uh, lied up and down to this private investigative reporter. Um, they stated that it would cause more mental turmoil, even though that 95% of the people that have abortions agree that it was the right choice for themselves to make. Um, said that th- this doctor or nurse for fake person that stands out front of these clinics that tries to get people to persuade their arguments and or information uh, and force their religion literally down these people's throats is, my my gosh, it's horrible here. But let me get to it. Um, They told this woman that it would cause her mental harm if she were to have an abortion. They told this woman that it could possibly make her suicidal. Um, It's it's just the most commonwealth problem that I've ever seen in my life. Um, Nonetheless, these employees sternly claim that these issues could arise uh, with Raisner's health. Basically, this investigator went in with fake pee. She uh, then went about to... uh, Can you guys hear me still? Yeah. I, I'm lost. Okay. She, yeah, I, 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 I I'm have gonna no beg idea you to get what, to the point. What you're trying to make or what story you're trying to tell? This is the uh, most confusing okay. story I've heard in ages. Okay. Yeah. So I live in a very red. I live in a very red state. There was an investigative reporter that came into our town and five other towns here in Indiana. No, I, right. I've got that. I've got that. Let's get to just right. just give me a summary point. I don't know. I don't. I don't okay. want to hear the they, whole story they, again. Okay. All right. So I apologize. You're good. I'm just uh, a little ner- nervous. Um, Fine. So basically what happened was they lied to her about what mental health problems that yeah, this could potentially yeah, cause. Got all that. Uh, risk to pregnancy. Um, and, Jump uh, it's, it's, it's just a wild to me that this goes on, that people are allowed to do this. Got it. Like that there's no it's been going on for decades. I've been complaining tour. about it for decades. Yeah, it's disgusting. And, it, and it's just, it's still going on. It's 2022, and I just wonder when we're Yeah, it's even easier for to make go on because we lost the Supreme Court and we lost abortion. Yeah, oh yeah, most definitely. Uh, I woke up and my, my, my girlfriend that I have, she's deaf. She was like, wow, I'm a property of the state. Like, yep. and it's just, that's just the craziest thing to me because here it's like, there's no church and state separation. Like there's yeah. a lot of Christian schools here, religious based, uh, ideology here. And I just don't, I'm not sure. I don't know. I'm from Michigan, so I'm not used to all of this. It's just a very weird red state and it's a very corporate socialist state. And well, it's been I going on in Michigan. It's, a, it's just, you, you must've just not seen it or it not been brought to your attention. It's the, the, I, yeah, I, oh, most definitely. It goes on in a lot of states, most definitely, especially the southern area of Michigan. I've noticed a lot of the rural, more rural areas, like, uh, they just, it's, it's, it's horrible there. They're just as bad as Indiana is. So it's just uh, a little ironic for me to see these people post these things as healthcare info when it's totally religious religiously based healthcare shouldn't be based around religious so so just to, just to, ideologies just to put a bow on this are you calling to basically say hey did you guys know this was going on or are you calling to say what do we well, do about just, this or what's the what's the where are we getting what are we I'm, I'm not sure how we're supposed to organize as individuals in order to get this so we can at least have some of our rights back as human beings and our bodily autonomy because these same people don't want to wear masks around here that's for sure I don't like vaccines, but that's their choice and their body. But here, yeah. here, it's health care for women. It's just a no. <laughs> I, I feel like I could so go on for an unlimited amount of time Age on the topic, and no matter how much, I, and I, and I, no matter, sorry, real quick, Josh, real quick, real quick, no matter how much time <laughs> I go off on it, I will have done a worse job than John Oliver already did. So if you're looking for more resources and, and what other people have proposed to do specifically to this, I'd go type in Pregnancy Crisis Center, John Oliver. It's a really good episode. He covers everything. And then there's stuff at the end uh, as far as specifically. Otherwise, the it's it, we're just going to spend time sort of giving you the cliches of like obviously vote blue act you know volunteer everywhere you can be politically right. active it's just i'm having a really hard time to get these people to tell your neighbors to get yeah tell your neighbors yeah, that's that's right. go tell your neighbors about this there's no reason to call in and tell those of us who've been telling everybody about this for ages yeah. uh, not that i don't appreciate the call right, but i'm saying I'm if, if you're asking what what need no i'm not i appreciate the call but it's like if i get your frustration so it, the real let me let me sum up josh's call 
Hi, I'm Josh, and I'm incredibly frustrated and would like to know what the hell we're supposed to do now that we seem to have lost bodily autonomy with regard to abortion. I've watched uh, healthcare providers um, lie, or supposed healthcare providers lie to people in investigative reports. Uh, what should we do? The answer is you should vote. You should get active in politics. You need to make sure that um, like-minded people that share your views are engaged in voting. Tell your neighbors, tell your friends, um, and then help whoever is going to try to do it, stack the United States Supreme Court because we've lost it for a generation if we don't. That's exactly what I've been saying to you. And I also think they should uh, choose like arbitrarily some of us to vote on some of those things as like, you know, oversights in a jury, maybe, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but that's, uh, I'm sorry, I took up so, so much of your guys' time. Thank you for taking no, my fine. call. And I uh, just, sorry about the cliche argument here. I was just no, really frustrated. Yeah, it's a frustrating, so. frustrating times we live in. I have half of a it migraine right now, and I'm probably being in, extra impatient today because of that. But and so if it's me, oh, I'm no, sorry. Well, I want to get through the call. So yeah, yeah. thank you guys for taking my call. Thanks, Josh. Yep. Thanks, Josh. Yep. No problem. Uh, there's a call that's waiting. That if the screening numbers, if the screening notes are correct, I, I I'm just going to jump to Robert because I'm already annoyed at the premise of the question, and I'm hoping that Robert. Is going to correct me here on what's... Robert, uh, in the United Kingdom, you are on the line, and it says here that you don't understand why, as an atheist, we atheists are arguing with theists about morality, which is baseless without a god. Is that really your argument? Tell me I'm missing something. It's not really argument. It's rather topic for discussion. First of all, I would like to say hello to Matt. He's my big, uh, big, uh, big hero. I'm fun. I'm uh, sorry for yeah, my we'll English. I'm Polish. Gotcha. Hello? So this, so this is Robert. It sounds like you're saying you're calling because you want to know how to respond to people who say, "Why are you arguing with theists when on morality when you have a baseless?" I mean, uh, maybe I will, uh, I will, I will clarify because maybe my English is not yeah. good. Because I was talking with man taste and man taste, uh, and I'm talking about they were using it as a Oh yeah, God exists because we've got morality, and why we have those morality? I know why we are arguing, but I thought usually if you don't have your God proven, there's no point going to the morality because you have to have your base for your morality. Otherwise, it's just baseless claim. And I understand that because no. they believe in God, they're using to uh, I don't know to clarify that the. Uh, Money thing. Sorry, I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> no, you're fine, Robert. But it's um, my point. I I understand why we arguing because the taste using the uh, um, to uh, to justify when they um, how was the word? Sorry, my English is decreased when I'm a little bit nervous because they think that the God is ultimate uh, decision maker. But if he doesn't exist, they they there's no point going there. They are uh, no. for me to this. So, Robert, what they're doing yeah. is not saying they're not arguing about morality. They're using morality as an argument for God. The, the arguments for the existence of God fall into a number of different categories. There are ontological arguments, which are about what God's properties are. There are teleological arguments, which are about using the structure of the universe and showing that God is the reason that it's thus and so. There are moral arguments, and the point is that they're saying this version of morality exists, and if you agree with them, yeah. then the only way that version of morality exists is if there is a God. And so what they're doing is they're putting you in a position where either you reject that this particular version of morality exists, which I'm happy to do, or you recognize that you are now in conflict. It's like saying, um, hi, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have somebody bringing me uh, insulin and iced tea, and she's way prettier and smarter than all of us. So thank you, sweetie. Um, but that's what the arguments are. are. The, the moral argument for the existence of God is a way to show that because someone accepts that there are moral absolutes or moral truths that are objective, that therefore the only explanation for that is that a God exists. It is not an attempt to prove morals. It is an attempt to use morals to prove God. Well, is that, I, I that up? Okay. I, my question is, uh, sir, maybe I didn't clarify this. My question is, we, 
And then when they go into that moral argument, I know they're using us as proving the God, but right. they, we, we are like a drug in the deeper and deeper with that argument. But without them, without proving they God, that argument is a empty, it's a baseless. That's my no, 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 my no, 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 no. This is, you said this. You've said this two or three times now, Robert. There, I'm, right. what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, they are using morality to prove that a god exists. You're saying it's pointless until they prove that a god exists. No, that's what they're trying to do. No, no. Yes, I know. But from our side, we. I think it's we making a mistake. You don't get to, you don't, no, 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 no. From our side is is jumping to a conclusion that isn't warranted. The argument is for the existence of God. You can't say you don't get to use an argument for the existence of God until you prove God. Yeah, but they don't. That that, that, that in my opinion, that argument is empty. Doesn't have any power behind it. Well, I'm and I'm sorry I that that's your opinion. But if, in fact, someone believes that there are objective morals and they have no way to it other than a god, then it is, in fact, an argument for the existence of a god. No, no, I um, yeah, yeah, I understand it. Actually, they don't have any other argument, actually, because I talk with Mali Trace. And I'm actually mostly agree with you, Matthew, and I'm actually adding uh, this very big privilege to talk with you. I'm trying to get my nurse and call you for the few last few years, and then... I mean, I, I think, yeah, I mean... I mean, the answer, the, the, the like short answer, down. Robert, to why we argue with them about it is because they're wrong. If they're asking, why well, are I, you arguing I, us when this is baseless? Because you're wrong that it's baseless. You, you take but the argument own. that they present. You don't, get, you don't get to decide what arguments they present, and you don't get to just dismiss their arguments. If their arguments are, are in unvalid, invalid or unsound then you can point that out. But to say you don't get to, you know, use God, God is the conclusion. This is a syllogism. If A, then B, if B, then C, A, therefore C. Yeah, yeah, I, I understand, but I think uh, there is not that they present as a first premise. They, we just getting insight in that premise in the deeper, uh, in the deeper uh, level instead of dismissing completely they say there is no point of this discussing deeper have you got any other argument i i think that my my, que I, my I question i don't know what to, i don't know what to say you keep saying something that i find incorrect and when i correct and when i correct and when i correct it and when i correct it you then say yeah, you know and uh, you understand so if I you know and understand it. i guess we're done yeah i don't yeah i yeah anyway thank you very much for talking with you it's a big big pr privilege Thanks, Robert. And uh, have a nice day, Thanks. and uh, hear you soon. Cool. Thanks. Uh, I I'm hoping that the simplest thing is that there's just a barrier there where we weren't able to communicate with each other because it, it almost seemed like yeah, he's asking for us to deal with a specific type of theist that we don't know what that theist is going to advocate for because there's like... 40 different ways you might take somebody calling in to take make that morality argument though it's all going to funnel down to roughly the same couple things I don't know. it's it's in so part of this and by the way there's uh we have more callers but there's also a couple lines open so if you're a theist and, and we're waiting to get in now is the perfect time to call yep. um so when someone's making an argument for the existence of god they can make whatever ridiculous argument they want and the, the duty then of the person like myself or Jimmy who's listening is to either, A, if it is valid in structure and we accept the premises, we must accept the conclusion. That's just how reason works. If they make an argument that is valid in structure with premises that we accept, if we do not accept the conclusion, we are irrational. And that means that you need to either be able to uh, reject a premise. Not That does not mean you have to be able to prove a premise wrong because premise could be unfalsifiable or simply not capable of being demonstrated to be true, which may mean it's, it's, it could still be true. Yeah. But you either have to reject a premises, one, one of the premises, or you have to show that it's not valid in structure. That's yeah. how you go about demonstrating a problem with an argument. It's not, okay, what else you got? It's not, no, you don't get to do that because you didn't prove God. Um, it is, 
when, if they're using God as a candidate explanation for something, they have to show a connection between the observed phenomenon and God. Now, I, I've said many times that you don't even get to present God as a candidate definition or a candidate explanation until you demonstrate that God exists, or more accurately, until you define the characteristics of a God that are that would make the uh, that are consistent with the rest of the argument um, and plausible. Um, in the s- same way that we we demonstrated to some extent. Uh, dark matter or dark energy, even though these are in abstract, hypothetical, um, mathematical conclusions, it's not like there's actually dark matter or dark energy. I mean, this is the label that we put on um, uh, unknowns that we are, that are becoming more known, I suppose, is, is one way to put it. And so when somebody argues from a moral position, they're saying, do you think that there are objective morals? And if you say yes, and do you think that these morals have to have a discrete, uh, absolute source? And you say yes. And then they can say uh, the absolute discrete source for morality is God. Um, there's a few other steps that they could do in there, but that's the conclusion you're trying to really re- reach. And you don't just get to accept the premises and reject the conclusion, because if you do, you're irrational. I uh, I enjoy the irony of the statement of I've chosen an objective re- uh, an objective morality. That's the thing that I feel like is the funniest thing to me is all these in the objective re- uh, morality arguments is tr- how tremendously subjective their arguments usually are. Uh, me th- okay. This topic I think is going to be very interesting and. Uh, It'll depend on some things. So we're going to talk to Mia in Brussels. Uh, Mia, you want to talk about standing up for things. Go ahead, Mia. Um, Hello, can you hear me? I sure do. Yes, you can. Um, Okay, so the reason I called in today is because I had a discussion with my friend, and uh, she told me to call in to this show. Okay. Um, sure. So, um, I'm a, I'm a new atheist, um, and uh, so all the people I know and my family, they are all religious, very conservative. This is my first friend that isn't like that, um, and um, because everyone I know is very um, politically politically right, Um, I often hear very sexist, homophobic, sometimes racist um, opinions. And um, my question was, if I don't have the courage to say something, even though I don't think it's right, does that make me a bad person? So I think uh, uh, our answer is, I'm guessing because I think we've talked about this before. They'll probably be pretty similar. But my my perspective on it is is it mostly depends. And some of this is going to be subjective to what I think is morally virtuous or not. But uh, you shouldn't do anything which undermines your safety, your feeling of well-being, uh, your mental health, your physical health, certainly. And if you are in a situation where it's not fun to get dogged on. It's not fun to engage with family members who, especially if they are older than you or are your parents, have an automatic mechanism by which they can dismiss you. It's a natural psychological thing that turns a lot of people into douchebags toward their children and toward people who are younger than them, uh, where it's, a uh, uh, I see you as an adolescent forever, even though you're an adult because I taught you basic skills in life. Therefore, whatever I think you're wrong about, I can dismiss on the basis of you, I used to have to wipe your ass kind of shit. Uh, and it's, uh, and you should never do anything that is going to make you feel unsafe. Uh, that is, that is, well, I shouldn't say never. I do things that make me feel unsafe on purpose, but you should weigh these things. You should weigh, uh, your mental health, your physical health. And also you said you're a new atheist. You should probably wait until you're confident that you can handle 
those conversations anyway. Because even when you're like watching things and reading things and you can sit there and if you had a moment to write it all out, you're like, man, I can journal the fuck out of why I'm correct on this issue or I'm confident on this issue. And then somebody raises their voice and our brains go blank. That was certainly my issue uh, when I first started trying to fight with my dad about things. And also because I was bringing a fight. And if that's where you're starting at ground one, you're, you're probably not going to get very far. Uh, and so, no, I think it's, it, de- it, it all depends, but I also think and try to challenge people to try and where you can learn what you can do safely and do stand up for other people because that whole adage of the only thing for evil to exist in the world is for good people to do nothing. Uh, so try to do more than nothing, but keep yourself safe. Yeah. I, I think Jimmy and I are pretty much in complete agreement. It's a difficult issue because there's a distinction between a moral duty, which might also be called a moral obligation, and a moral virtue. And so if you fail to be morally virtuous, I don't think that necessarily makes you immoral or a bad person. But if you fail a moral duty or a moral obligation, I think in that context, it makes you a bad person. And so um, part of this involves risk assessment, which is or cost benefit analysis, which Jimmy was kind of talking about, which if you're going to put your health or your well-being at risk. Um, it reminds me, if you've ever been on an airplane, um, when they talk about if there's a sudden loss of cabin pressure, an oxygen mask will drop from the overhead compartment above you. Please secure your mask first before assisting others with their mask. And the reason for that is just simple triage. If you don't have your mask on, you can't be of help to other people. And similarly, in your regular life, if you um, have put yourself at constant risk, um, to where your life is now uh, miserable and you've lost your resources and assets and your time, you can't help anybody with anything at all. And so you have to figure out where there's a duty and where there's a virtue. And so like donating to cancer research is probably virtuous or almost definitely virtuous, um, but it doesn't make it a duty. And, And so in that sense, when you say, if I don't stand up for what I believe politically, morally, or religiously, those are three different categories. And I would say that when we say politically or religiously, um, those may not be duties. But I think when you say what you believe morally, that may be closer to a duty. Like if if someone's beating up someone, like if you come across a, a guy who is assaulting another person, the morally virtuous thing to do is to intercede to try to save that person. But that doesn't mean you have to put yourself at risk. But if you are at no risk and you fail to do it, then yeah, I think in that instance, you you are um, essentially morally corrupt. Does that, does that make sense? Um, yeah. Yes. Thank you. And what my friend said is about not being a good ally or something like that? Yeah, sure. don't <laughs> don't put too much stock in any one individual gatekeeper's opinion on how you're supposed to be behaving when they have such limited understanding of your situation and what actually your life is like. It's it, sh- Your friend sounds like the kind of ally that annoys the shit out of me. Yeah, it, it, it's fine. It's fine to listen to others. And if they say, hey, I think you could do more, or I think you're not doing enough, um, whether or not it's when they consider it an obligation, by and large, each individual gets to determine whether or not they count you as an ally. Um, I don't get to decide on my own, am I an ally to the entire LGBTQIA plus community? As a matter of fact, I'm not. I'm I'm sure there are LGBTQIA plus people out there who don't consider me an ally, which means I'm ne- nobody's ever going to be an ally to absolutely everybody in that community. But the fact that one person may not consider me an ally doesn't mean that I've necessarily done something wrong. Um, and the opinion of an individual is only worth the weight of that. Um, so if your friend is having you call because they think you're not being a good ally, then you'd want to talk about the specifics and say, okay, what is it you'd like me to do? how does that impact my life? And am I a bad person if I don't do that? Because somebody might be like, oh, you have to be standing up saying every time, um, 
you know, hey, you did this. I don't have to call out every time somebody misgenders somebody to be an ally. I probably will um, because I pretty much yeah. trained myself that if somebody intentionally misgenders somebody else, um, I'm, I'm going to call that out. But if I fail to call it out, that doesn't mean I'm a bad person. Yeah. Matt and I also have it. We just talked about this mm -hmm. the other day, but Matt and I have a different list of privileges than a lot of people as white male public figures. At a certain point, it's we actually can yell at people about things that other people will be dismissed just for yelling, for example. You have to weigh your position. Uh, yeah. Anyway, Mia, do you feel like You've got a, a, something to go with there. I, I feel like your friend did not get the questions. response from us that she was expecting uh, when she told you to call in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah it's not that I don't want to um, uh, stand up for, that, for what I believe in, but I know I lose a lot of family and, and friends and so I'm scared. Yeah. Yeah. Start small. I think you'll find that actually starting to advocate for yourself, you'll probably learn ways to communicate it and you'll probably find that it actually is is freeing for yourself. But don't yeah, don't put yourself in a position. And also it's funny because you, you mentioned family, I think two or three times now. People call me all the time and, and ask, what can I say to my family so they'll start to understand this issue or they'll start to respect, you know, my trans friends or they will uh, see where I'm coming from on and that's the specific question that I couldn't be apparently less qualified to answer because I didn't change. Even the family members I have now who are atheists, it wasn't me who changed their mm -hmm. mind. And if I knew how to change parents' minds, my parents would be atheists. Instead, they're more insufferable as Mormons than ever. So that, there's that too. Mm -hmm. All right. I, I have a question, Mia, if, if, if we're done with the call, this is, this is absolutely related to nothing, but you're in Belgium, so I wanted to ask, um, my great-grandmother's mm -hmm. from Belgium. Are you familiar with, perhaps, children's nursery rhymes in Flemish? Uh, yeah, a bit. My, gra my great-grandmother taught me this, and I'm probably saying it wrong. I just want to know if, if you've ever heard it or anything like it. So I'm going to try my best. My apologies for the... This is going to be terrible pronunciation, but. Thermaluit, lakarput, langathrapa, kortepnapa, klenperluitse tolletefoot. Can you say it again? Sure. Thermaluit, lakarput, langathrapa, kortepnapa, klenperluitse tolletefoot. That's from one of Okay. Hi. <laughs> I've always been told it was just a bunch of nonsense stuff by my great grandmother, but I've, I've also run across people who think they've heard some version of it. So, Mia, anything else before we okay. let you go? Thank you so much. Okay, great. I Thank you so much for taking my call. Yeah, good luck. Good luck navigating family and friends, and good luck navigating living in a place that is known for the most disgusting vegetable on the planet. Thank you, Mia. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the calls I like when we're going to talk to atheist people because I feel like that's one of the ones where it's not just useful to the person calling but useful to other people who are watching. I didn't um, even know my, bro my brother was in chat, but he's laughing right now because he was taught that fucking nursery rhyme too. Yeah, and I think, I think Mia has not heard it. It might be like when you get a tattoo in a different language and the tattoo artist uh, was making fun of you. Your grandmother might have been roasting you. My great-grandmother was from Belgium. I, okay. I, she's 100% Belgian, and which makes me an eighth. Gotcha. A lot of international calls today. We've got Lars from Switzerland. Lars, how you doing? Oh, hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, sure do. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, my question is basically, I, I'm currently having to go through a lot of stuff, cut off family members and all that, all that fun stuff. I've been an atheist. I've had a kind of gradual transition into atheism. And, um, you know, it wasn't like one big sudden moment. But anyway, I, as Jimmy just mentioned, I can't change their minds. And I'm getting increasingly frustrated and angry because the whole God, 
the whole God thing aside, I can't change their minds on a lot of stuff that impacts me directly as well. Many of my family members are anti-vax, transphobic, conspiracy-brained. And if I can't, what what do I do? What do I do if I can't change their minds? It's very, it's been very I, frustrating. I'm, I'm going to help you with something that's going to change your mind, I hope, a little bit here and change your perspective. Lars, who changed your mind on issues? Um, My friends. Nah, you did. Oh, yeah. You changed your mind. And if you keep having the perspective of how do I change their mind, you're never going to change their mind. You can be a part of their journey. And so the thing that you want to do is try and communicate in a way where they can become receptive. And if your goal is receptiveness, you're going to communicate in a different way than if you're going to try and win a debate where they admit their fault and their defeat. And now suddenly they have to be an atheist and they have to be trans accepting because you beat me with your logic after we went into that argument and I went into a defensive mode and all my walls went up, but you blew through them. It's never going to happen. Your only goal, if you're talking about how am I going to interact with people, and this is the thing I can say I achieved with even my own parents, I can get my parents to be respective, uh, or sorry, receptive and more respectful. I just can't get them to change what their actual beliefs are. Uh, and, and I think that that's going to be the thing that you most need to uh, work on is, is probably your perspective on it. But uh, uh I, I, yeah, that might not be a satisfying question. Matt, do you have thoughts on it too? You need to learn to give up when you can't change something because somebody else might be the person to do it. Um, you're not here to fix everybody. And, it, and if you're not doing a good job of correcting something with a particular person, move on. Just like when we hang up on a particular caller or when we tell a caller not to call back, go call one of the other shows. Maybe you'll find somebody who explains it better. But this notion that you have to be the one to fix everybody. Uh, trust me, I've been doing these shows for 18 years here in a couple months. Um, I, I'm not going to fix everybody. I'm going to keep trying, and I'm going to try to make sure that I don't waste my time. But when it gets to the point where you feel stuck, stop. Go do something else. Stick a pin in it. Take notes. Do some research. Have them talk to somebody else. I know it's frustrating. You don't think the, we're, we're frustrated with the fact that we have uh, loved ones who are dumber than a sack of hammers and completely irrational and bigoted and hateful and stupid in almost every conceivable way? Yeah. Um, go start a show and talk to some other people and see if maybe you can do better <laughs> there. Than we do. Lars, I, did I you... Uh, it's just, I'm, I'm kind of... Go ahead. I, I guess, in a way, I'm lucky where I don't have to have contact with with the people in my family, with the worst ones in, in my family and stuff. But I, I, I'm also just kind of asking this question for people who, who don't have that option. That yeah, I do. for sure. Yeah. I, I, that's why we're engaging the question. I, I would have probably just said, well, hang up Talk to screeners, get rid of that one. Uh, because it, it is a useful question to ask, uh, and, and for other people to hear the answer to, uh, I don't know. Did, Lars, did you watch the beginning of the show? Uh, I've, most of it. First okay, I was going to say Manuel. the very yeah the very first call was an example of me giving up on trying to change somebody's mind, and it was the right time to give up on trying to change somebody's mind. And I told them though, if you want to keep talking, because clearly you keep coming here to have these talks, here's how we're going to do it. Uh, and so with people in your own life, it may be more powerful for you to set strong boundaries about what it takes to respect you and be your family and be your friends, though setting those boundaries may be what leads to the conversations that you want to have. The arguments that you, may, I assume, are having, the fights, the telling people what they're, uh, that they're wrong and stuff is almost certainly less effective at that. Yeah, that's actually what I'm doing right now. Um, I've worked this out with my therapist. I've started talking again with my dad a couple of times unconditionally, and that didn't work. And I guess maybe try that. Maybe other people can also try that. But I, I ended up writing up a contract and of of the stuff that he's not allowed to say around me, mostly. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, that's one approach. I mean, I'll say that sounds like a very aggressive approach. My my approach would have been like, if I'm going to write something up, it's more of a like, hey, man. And my dad would take this in stride because he's still got a sense of humor. I was like, your memory sucks. So I wrote this out for you so you have an easy reference cheat sheet. Uh, uh, and and that would have probably been my more my yeah, approach. Yeah, it's, it's like a... I'm I'm also phrasing it kind of aggressively, sure. but but yeah, it's just a set of guidelines on how we talk with each other in a way that doesn't hurt us either yeah. of us. Yeah. When you say contract, especially a lot of these people who have these complexes of persecution are going to interpret that as you are trying to compel me to behave a certain way, uh, and so that's why I brought that up. Uh, yeah, yeah. You got a really good point. Got to you got to try and meet people where they are. Unfortunately, sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Lars. Well, hey, I anything really, else really appreciate the it. Um, yeah. Uh, moving on. Uh, everything is every, nothing is real. Universe is a hologram. Bye, gold. Bye. <laughs> okay. What are birds? Uh, damn it! I just remembered that I was going to make a joke in the call from Belgium about sometimes it's not okay to just be sitting on the bench. And I knew a few people would get the reference and then I forgot to make the joke because I got distracted by something else. Uh, we have some other calls. They are waiting to be screened. So for the moment, we will talk to Eric in Illinois, an agnostic wondering about prayers and sports. That's certainly the wrong number there. Eric, go ahead. Let's, let's talk to you. Hey, how you guys doing? Just fine. How are you? Good, good, good. Yeah, I was just listening in, and I was uh, thinking the last couple of days, how would you all deal with, like, a situation that occurred with the uh, Buffalo Bills player who was injured, and he had to be resuscitated back on the field, and everyone took a knee and, like, in a prayerful, you know, posture. How would you deal with that if you were like a uh, an atheist or, you know, you belong, not just so much in sports, but just in general, like if you're on the job and something tragic occurs and everyone else is, you know, basically at a point where they're praying, how would you deal with, with it? I'd largely ignore it. Yeah. I'm, sorry. If I can ask for a clarification, do you want to know how I would deal with the people being religious around me or how I would specifically react to a crisis non-religiously? Um, well, I guess it's, it's kind of like from both sides. I mean, if okay. like with the incident that happened with the Buffalo Bills player, everyone on the field took a knee to pray. I mean, would you just stand or would you take a knee and not no, no I, how would I'd you deal with be, it? I, I would take a knee, but a knee doesn't mean you're praying. Right. Okay. I mean, I, I you know, just when when I go to church with relatives, when everybody stands up, I stand up. When everybody sits down, I sit down. When they all bow their heads to pray, I just sit quietly there. I don't bow my head. I look around at all the other people to find out where the rest of the atheists are who got sucked into coming to this thing, too. <laughs> <laughs> When, when somebody's injured and everyone takes a, a knee, that is, that is, you know, for people who want to pray, pray. But largely it's just, okay, we are all going to pause and take a moment while this serious thing is going on so that we're not distracted and doing something else and we're not disrespectful to the person that was there. When I say I was going to ignore it, I mean, I'm not going to pay any attention to somebody who, who's, who's praying. But, you know, when, yeah. when Colin takes a knee, he ain't praying. That's, yeah. Right. I mean, yeah, that was more for the, uh, like, uh, the whole other uh, issue. Yeah, I definitely uh, get where you're coming from. But, yeah, I was just thinking because a lot of times a lot of people, we're on these jobs and different situations occur, you know, and I've seen arguments kind of, you know, break out of people and say, well, why didn't you do this and why didn't you take a knee? So, in other words, you, you would just say just be respectful in that moment. Yeah, I, I certainly don't. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I was just saying, as long as you're not being blatantly disrespectful, that's the only issue. Yeah, I, I definitely don't and would never advocate for policing other people's reaction to tragedy and crisis. Uh, yeah. Don't do that. The, 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 I guess the worst thing I could say is if somebody confronts you, I would start with the question of as a non-believer, 
what gesture can I do that is consistent with my beliefs that will make you feel more comfortable or respected or whatever? I might ask something like that. If somebody comes at me sideways immediately like an asshole, I'm kind of bad at not being an asshole back. Somebody, I was in Houston yesterday and somebody honked at me as I was parking. And so I got out and walked up to their car and asked them why, what they needed my attention for. And I'm bad at, I'm bad at being, I was nice. I didn't come with, I'm about to fight you, you know, body language. I came about, I came with like, you were looking for my attention. So now you have it. Body language. I just can't, I don't know. Houston also has the worst fucking drivers in the world. And this is unrelated to what we're talking <laughs> about, but Jesus fucking Christ, Houston, learn how to no. drive. No, it was just something that, uh, just ran across my mind and, uh, you know, because it was a big moment, you know, national TV. And I'm like, well, I was just thinking, what about the atheists and agnostics in that moment? You know, what would they have done? Again, yeah, you know, I'd have taken a knee, else. too. Uh, I probably would have looked forward as I was taking a knee. I probably I probably would have cared a lot to make sure nobody mistook me for praying. But um, th- you know what's weird, Matt, is this question has come up with me in, like, DMs, too, is people being talking about, like, how much God stuff is coming up surrounding this event and how much it's appearing on the news. And, and I don't, the dude's religious and does religious stuff. And he has a charity with a religious basis. What, what do people expect? I mean, we can all go like, well, that's stupid, but I'm just going to get back to my, my, I also found it very annoying when they Christed up the inauguration of Joe Biden. And when that singer very disrespectfully, in my opinion, to Leonard Cohen changed the song hallelujah to have a Christian message oh, yeah. by just adjusting a few words. And then I went on, I went, that's really annoying and stupid. And then I went and I lived my life. That's what I did. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. You know, real quick before I, um, you guys let me go sure. with you saying that with Biden, uh, Biden, Joe Biden, Mm-hmm. Is that um, a law, or maybe I may be missing something? Does uh, a, a president or a elected official, what if they decline to put their hand on the Bible? Is that is that do they have to, or no. do you guys know? They yeah, they don't, they don't have. have to. Oh okay. Uh, a All common right, can you look uh, listen in. It hasn't happened with president yet, but it has happened now in Congress. And a common substitute is to put your hand on the Constitution, basically a. Uh, a book, a little, okay. so people will still usually put their hand on something. And the secular version so far has been the constitution. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot. I, thanks that's for taking my call. Thanks, Eric. Thanks, Eric. All right. Bye. Yeah, that's exactly what I would do. Um, by the way, it's the same. Um, you, you, you're swear or affirm. And, and this isn't just a matter of um, religion versus irreligion. Jehovah's witnesses can't, can't swear that way. Um, so, you can affirm what you know, like when you're being sworn in for court. Um, you don't have to put your hand on a Bible or a stack of Bibles. Although I, I, I'm going to have to do a video on a stack of Bibles since I literally have a stack of Bibles over there to the left. Oh, sorry, two of them are now over here. So I have two stacks. I'm surrounded by stacks of Bibles. There are two or three over on that side, and there are two or three over on this side. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I would actually go so far as to say it amazes me that Christians who are dem at least Democrats or somebody, the Christians who have exp- uh, expressed that they understand the importance of separation of church and state, because there are many who say that it is absolutely key to running the government and that it's extremely important, the, the separation of church and state. Uh, I would go so far as to say that I'm surprised and somewhat annoyed that nobody has done it who is a Christian yet and makes that accounting. No, no one has gone and said, look, we separate church and state. I am here being sworn in in my state position, my political position. So I find it most appropriate to swear on the Constitution. I I don't know. I I think it's kind of wild that it uh kind of wasn't always the tradition as a display of the importance of that fundamental thing our Constitution r- relies on. Anyway. Uh, we're going to talk to LR in Los Angeles. LR, uh, something about religion and poems and are you calling to recite a poem? No, 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 not at all. I was literally going to shut you down if you were, I was going to say no, no, I did not, I did not work this hard with Matt. 
to build up this size audience to let somebody else <laughs> use it for their poetry when I don't even like poetry. Hey, you don't no, like Eminem? Show my, uh, okay. <laughs> Eminem is one of the finest poets of all time. What's the difference? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I love that. I love Eminem. <laughs> Uh, anyway, sorry, go ahead, LR. I'm sorry I derailed it with my own bullshit. I do that. That's all right. Uh, just a 10-second brief so you fully understand where I'm coming from. I'm an artist in L.A. Um, I specialize in conceptual art, uh, very philosophically oriented. Uh, my next project, basically, I'm going to utilize the art for my creator of L.R.L.A., Hey, uh, LR, is this, an, is this an art project right here where your phone mangles up into unrecognizable sounds? Yeah, you sound like a, you sound like you're making love to a robot or something. Something crazy is going on there, LR. Uh, I, if you're moving around, I'd suggest what, you stay still or get, or if you're not moving, get closer to your router or somewhere that the signal is a little more secure. What about now? So, so robotic? It's it's popping a little, but I think it's better. All right, um, I can try getting back in the queue if that's better for you guys. If it's if it's that bad. No, I think I think we've improved the quality enough to at least understand you. Okay, um, I'm putting up a billboard in LA using okay, background. And there the it billboard. goes again. We had a solid six seconds. It was great, and then it all went to shit. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'll put you back in the queue and then pull you back in and see. Uh, but to anybody right now who is watching and thinking they might want to call in, we have one line open for atheists. We have two lines open for theists. We'd love to talk to y'all about whatever. Uh, so we're going to see if reconnecting this call improves things. I don't think it's going to, but uh, we'll give it a shot. LR, I've reconnected you. Let's see what happens. LR, are you there? Uh, yes, can you hear me now? I do hear you now. Okay, perfect. Um, just just let me know and stop me if I'm starting to get a little bit robot on you. I will. Um, Guaranteed. So, so, okay, so basically, quick 10-second summary. I'm an artist in L.A. putting up a billboard high-traffic area. Uh, I specialize in conceptual art, mainly philosophically oriented poems and things like that. So I'm using a white background, black font, the simple poem that's going to be on the billboard is a picture of the prophet. And obviously it's not an actual picture of Muhammad. That's obviously a, a clear no, no in, in, in the doctrine of Islam, but it's essentially my way of one bringing up the criticism and two, hopefully sparking up a conversation around what I would consider very illogical, very illogical and inconsistencies and in like what it means to express yourself and, and things like that. So I guess really my question is, is, is a project like this a good methodology to start these conversations? And do you think that it would have any sort of constructive reception from, from a project like this? The word, are you saying it's the words you have in against white in black font, the words, a picture of the prophet, but not a literal picture of the prophet? Muhammad? Yes. Okay. Yes. I, if it's not connected to, I, I, I'm, I'm not trying to sound cynical or, or shit on your cereal, but if it's not connected mm -hmm. to some greater movement or obvious action or something, I don't get the point. And it seems like a waste of money to me, but I'm, maybe I'm missing something. I don't know. Matt, what do you think? Um, I don't understand it, it just it just text that says a picture of the prophet. Um, I, I don't I, I don't know what that would do. I don't know what what you're trying to do. I, I don't get it. What's what's the outcome you're hoping for? Um, that's that's fair. So what I would say is what it's attached to in a bigger sense is it's attached to the conversation that not only the show is grounded on, which is the hope and the aim to criticize certain establishments that are clearly clearly damaging to a greater part of not only this society but many societies around the world and to answer jimmy's concern which is totally a fair I, there is no roi in this project at all I, i'm not getting any return on investment in the funds that i'm going to spend on the project so just like give this, me the money 
<laughs> I don't get it, man. Okay, so wait. Does it say when the show is or where the show is? Is it advertising an event that's going to advocate for the things? Or does the entire billboard just say a picture of the prophet? The entire billboard will say a picture of the prophet as well as um, my... But that's not a problem. My, what, what's not a problem? You are allowed to write the words, <laughs> a picture of the prophet. That's not outlawed in, in, in Islam at all. Yeah, you got no fatwas coming your way, bud. Yeah, I would say that it's... That's Every Muslim on the planet nature. should ignore your billboard. Well, I would say that most Muslims would pay attention by the fact that this is where the conceptual aspect comes into play, where when you read the word, the picture of the prophet, a, pic, a picture of the prophet, are you not immediately drowning in the Oh, my God. Of, oh, my God. Please don't tell me that you heard the don't think of an elephant thing and decided to turn it into a billboard. No, 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 no. This is... This then, is then my, what, if, if a billboard says, here, Jimmy, put it up on the Chiron right now instead of LR, just put a picture of the prophet and please explain to me what this is supposed to do. How can we get Ridvin to call in or somebody to, to tell me why would any Muslim object to the words picture of a prophet? Yeah, uh, I would say that there would be a clear difference between, for example, right now on the screen, having the words a picture of the prophet versus the specific environment in which i'm trying to start that conversation no so, no, one, no 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 LA. no no there's fucking yeah. not I'm that's sorry, some man. artsy fartsy shit you've convinced yourself of lr i i okay i want to hope that i'm missing something and part of it is i might literally be incapable of grasping the artsy fartsy stuff as matt is saying because this this concept of metaphor and everything and i for the record, I like that you want to do something. I just simply don't get it. And I hope that putting a picture of the prophet in our little text box down here just saved you like $15,000 or whatever at a high traffic LA billboard cost because it ain't cheap. Uh, and if so, I don't know, just send me half. Half would be fine. I, I, don't, um, I don't know well, what to I do. I will I will definitely use your guys' point of view as a constructive element in, in developing this project. Because, I mean, to be honest, you guys are extremely, not only scientifically, but philosophically inclined. So if your reaction to something like this is this, then that, that, should, tell me, that should tell me a lot compared to what laymen and what the average person would feel by seeing a message like this. So I'm going right, to Matt, I'm let's try this. Let's try this. Matt, if you is. had enough money to put... Uh, four, five, four to five words on a billboard, and that's in a high traffic area in LA. What five, four to five words would you would you use? Four to five words. Yeah. Prove your God this Sunday, and then the number. The phone number. That'd be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God, do that. Don't even send me the money. Just advertise the show. Uh. I, if, if I was just doing the words and I was trying to be artsy and I just wanted people to think, I wouldn't even go the God route. I would literally do something like, but is it true though? With a question mark. That would be, that would be my five okay, words. But w wouldn't, wouldn't you say though that that, because that's a beautifully conceptual sentence, but wouldn't you say that that would kind of invoke the same reaction as if I told that to you in the first place? If, if I told you, I called and I said, I'm going to put on the billboard. But is it true, though, question mark? I, I genuinely feel like your yeah. and Matt's response would be somewhat similar, similar in the sense of it, it doesn't make sense or there's not good Well, no, Matt's was to... self-serving, and I loved that, and it was a better okay, answer yeah, than mine. Fair. I had just thought mine of mine before. Mine gets you directly to the show. I don't, yeah. you know, but is it true, though, doesn't tell me what the hell you're even talking about on a billboard with just those words alone. I like that could be it, about whether or not the election was stolen. Exactly. And that's, that's why I liked that. I was like, if I was just going to shit away money, which I'm sorry if I'm implying what that that's what you're doing lr because i don't mean to imply i mean to just say it but anyway if i was just going to shit away money on a billboard with some sort of message like that you know it might at least be fun as people are passing by and it's a couple and one of them's a QAnon person and a I, I can I can spend the rest of that night just enjoying the imaginary conversations that probably never happened, and I will have shit away my money, and hopefully I make so much money that it was worth the difference or whatever. I don't. I currently couldn't shit away that amount of money. Uh, I just the a picture of the prophet in L.A. 
I mean, you know, put it up Why in downtown put up an Baghdad. Actual picture. Well, El- there's no way you can um, get that approved. I, I think. Well, I one that would be the obvious issue is getting it approved and finding a, a vendor and owner of a billboard that would allow that. The second is that is in no way starting a constructive conversation at all. Me saying a picture of the prophet is not me being disrespectful. Who's it's just okay? My sorry, 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 sorry. Who's having the productive conversation? It, you you don't think somebody's going to come to you and now talk about a picture of the prophet? Give me give me a. You think there's a good chance person A who is who is this is going to talk to person mm-hmm. B and then identify identify both and the conversation will be about mm-hmm. what is the what productive conversation is starting that you think is actually so, going to happen Basically basically the question would be like what what is what hope am I having in terms of the conversations that are sparked from this billboard I mean a plethora to be be just give me one just give me an example just so, one example of a conversation that you think will commonly happen because i'll tell you my example person a is going to look at person b and go wow some asshole has too much money and i bet you whatever answer you come up with will not come close to the number of people that are going to say that well to be honest it's so everybody knows everybody can do their own research on how much this costs it's yeah. not that much money in terms of like your ability to save up and if you're financially literate to an extent but to answer your previous maybe question, i'm not the, the is it one, not was fifteen thousand not close i i would have thought it's something crazy fifteen thousand would be if you're aiming towards digital and on the freeway but the location that i am is more of like in the downtown area not on the freeway so that drastically brings out uh, of those numbers. Okay. Go ahead. I, Go I mean, it, it's in the, it's in the thousand. So everybody's can you just tell us? like I'm spending a, a couple hundred bucks. Can you just tell us? It costs Is there a reason why? Yeah. I mean, if you don't want to share it, you don't have to share it, but it sounds like you could just maybe tell us what, it, how much it costs. Well, your, your comment on what people would say definitely makes me very hesitant to yeah. tell anybody because whatever number I say now, you literally set up the audience in the chat. Oh, to, I see. I see. To I, shit on me. This no, I, mean, no I, don't, I, I don't mean to. I, I get what you're saying. You, you, you're, yeah, you're, that's fair. I'm not meaning to. I'm meaning to tell you what I am. I am very cynical of people. Uh, and I'm yeah, not course, saying yeah. I would say some asshole has too much money. I'd probably snicker at it and go, ah, oh, they thought that was funny. Uh, but so I don't know. I don't. One, one, conversation, one conversation that I would hope would be spawned from a project like this would be one, is, which is the most obvious, which is, one, why is there a specific doctrine outlining the prohibitions of drawing the figure of Muhammad? That is something that if you dive deep into, it is just illogical. Even if you try to attach it to other things in the Quran, there is no real justification behind why you cannot draw a visual depiction of Muhammad. So that, that one conversation, which is, why can't you do that? And right, then and you think that's going to be happening with Muslims, or you think two atheists like you and I are going to just agree with each other about it? Because I think it's going to be two atheists like you and I are just going to agree with each other about it. Um, I would say that's part of it, but when doing art projects, especially in the eye of the public, I am aiming for the people that are willing to listen. I'm not aiming for every Muslim. I'm not aiming for every atheist. I'm not yeah. even aiming for every skeptic. I'm aiming for the people that are willing to consider these types of conversations. And I'm genuinely just hoping to not, m- maybe not consider myself an educator, but consider myself of somewhat of a bridge to okay. the educator. Let me tell you my perspective here then. Uh, I, my perspective is coming from, I think if I was a Mormon and I saw just the text on a billboard, magic underwear... I would just feel attacked and I would I would allow it to enter into my persecution complex and I would show its proof of religious bigotry and I would say ah look as as the prophecy says Mormons are going to go uh through way worse than whatever uh I I I it's it's not something I'm all well, that yeah, well we when, just got demonetized example, Matt- thanks Matt <laughs> When Matt is having a debate on on uh, whatever channel, if Wait, uh, I'm assuming on. that you can go ahead. Wait, that would get you demonetized? Probably. I don't know. No, no, no. I'm sorry. No, no I'm sorry. I was making a this whole show can get us demonetized, but we try and stay under the radar because 
And pretty much every episode, oh, I shouldn't admit this out loud. I feel like every episode we do things that can get us demonetized, but if we do specific things, the number of people who click the report button goes up. And that's what ends up happening. I say fuck. Well, I was all just going to show this because uh, yeah. I drew this May 20th of 2010 yeah. for the first Draw Muhammad Day uh, because I was told I, sh I wasn't allowed to. Sure. You, you don't get to tell people that they're not allowed to do stuff like that. Uh, so the difference, though, between what you just said and uh, so when you were saying Matt's debate, how many people are going to drive past and, and incidentally come across your billboard? Probably thousands, right? Well, well millions. Yeah, the place that okay. I am at, the impression rate is at about two and a half million for the month. How many people do we force our video in front of? Uh, nobody. Exactly. Uh, everything Matt and I do, we the people who watch us and consume us make the choice to watch us and consume us. These aren't comparable. Well, I would I say they're think, comparable in the sense. Go I, ahead, I think my, my, my personal opinion is mm -hmm. uh, you do what you want to do. I don't think that the words, a picture of the prophet are likely to achieve anything. Mm. I would see if maybe there were better words to get a better, um, uh, to, to to more likely reach your goal. But other than that, I mean, I don't care. Do whatever you want. Yeah, I, I, I'm sitting here going, like, the only things I could say could happen are are unforeseen. Like, it's, it's the sort of things you can't anticipate. Like, fuck, maybe we're wrong. Maybe you're going to put that up, and then Fox News is going to cover it, and then CNN is going to cover it, and then there's going to be a giant battle, and then it's going to result in people, you know, maybe all that's going to happen. But these are pretty big maybes, because there are people well, well, doing shit that, like that all the time. That's the position that I put myself in, in terms of, one, I'm taking on a project that is not a common trope that many artists do, and then the second difficulty is exactly, I would say that it's not a 0% chance of seeing what type of reception, but understanding the reception that I'm going to receive from this is limited because I have such little things to compare it to. You and I definitely can sit down and logically come to s some idea of how people react. And yeah. I know for a fact, multiple journalists will take on this story. It's a huge billboard in the middle of a fucking city that says a, a crazy thing about religion. Someone's obviously going to pick it up, but the thing is, to bring it back to essentially why I was even bringing it up when Matt debates, when someone debates, you are not trying to reach the people that are on the farthest side of the opponent. They're, you are not trying to reach those people. You are reaching and talking to the people that are willing to listen to you. And in terms of forcing something on somebody, that's a whole other conversation in terms of what advertising plays in society. Yeah, I, yeah, not yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't condemning you doing it because it's, it's against their will. Cause I don't give a fuck. You know, I think out. you're also wrong about who I'm trying to reach. Yeah, that could be true. Though. Okay. Do you, do you feel like you're trying to reach the people who are not willing to listen? Cause yes. if so, wouldn't that be illogical? Yeah. No, it wouldn't be you're because getting them to listen is step one. What I'm trying to do is get people to listen. And if they're there and pay and in, in attendance, then they're in already the uh, step one is done. And by the way, the really? most outrageous, the most, it's not the moderate theists that you're going to change their mind. They've already rationalized this shit away into the I don't care, it's no big deal category. It's the fundamentalists who are the prime target because they've built something on a foundation that as soon as you knock away one little bit of it, the whole fucking thing crumbles. You would say that when you are in a debate, you are actively okay. or implicitly trying to talk to people that are not willing to listen to you? That are not normally willing to listen. If they're fucking there, then they're willing to listen. I don't know who I, is or isn't likely to change their mind, but I can tell you this. If you knock out the legs under, from underneath fundamentalist arguments, from the, the, from the extreme arguments, their entire belief system crumbles. Liberal theists, the ones that are in the gay-friendly churches... They're not going to become atheists, and frankly, mostly, I don't need them to. Yeah. I I don't know if I would agree with that in the sense I that... I don't care I don't if you if agree. I'm telling you what the truth is and what my opinion is. 
No, yeah, I, I'm just saying my opinion, which is like here, think that here, when let me, let me, in, no, no, here, no, this is real fucking easy. Jimmy, were you part of a batshit crazy fundamentalist religion such that when you're the foundations were knocked out from underneath you, you dedicated your life to doing this? Yes, man. Yeah, yeah, oh, hey, how about me? How about virtually every host of every one of these shows? How about virtually everybody who is out there actively doing this stuff at the hardest core level? You don't see fucking liberal Christians from a fucking gay friendly church giving it up and going out and being uh, champions for skepticism and atheism. I got 18 years on that, this. I know what the fuck I'm no, talking that, that, about. Yeah, I, the, the, other, the only a fair point. The only other thing I have, I, I, I would say, and then we're probably gonna let you go, LR, so we can quickly go through these last <laughs> few calls we have. But uh, so a few years ago, there was a big, you know, nationally covered event where somebody shot up or was attempting to shoot up a uh, a, a draw Muhammad contest. And I don't know of a single person that that was the thing that changed their mind. I don't know of a single person who even really ever talks about it or remembers it. And that's about the most, no members. right. It, that's about the most sensational version of, of what we're talking about right now. Well, and I, 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 I'm not well, saying that, I, real quick, I'm not saying that you might call us back and go, Holy shit. I somehow deconverted every LA Muslim. And now we have the best atheist group in the world. I just doubt it. And I'm not saying that that's your goal. I know it's not, but I'm just saying I, I can't anticipate if somebody came to me and said, I have $5,000 for, for a billboard. And this is my idea. Now you have an artistic vision and you're very attached to it. You have this idea of not just an idea of what you hope happens, but I assume as an artist, you also are just interested to see what happens. Cause I, I used to work professionally as an artist, technically myself, and that's and and, and those sort of things happen. Uh, and so I, I'm not trying to take any of that away from you. And even as the as the you know socialist that I am, I'm not going to lecture you on whether or not you're wasting your money. If but if you called us, hoping that it would be we would validate it in any way. I think what we're both saying is to you is we can think of a lot better way to spend that money. We think. Yeah, I'm, def I'm definitely gathering that as your point, and, I'm, and I fully appreciate the, the advice. But before I go, it, just to end it, if you were to put something on the billboard, what, what would it be in terms of something you We already talked about this 30 minutes ago. Oh, do you mean any well, billboard? Well, yeah, we'd advertise the show. If somebody said, hey, we'll, we'll pay for a billboard in L.A. for you, we'd make a proper show advertisement, not just the five words. That's literally... That's okay. literally the truth. Do you, do you view your your talk shows as the most efficient way to get across your your? Oh no, no, no. I, I I just told you that I'm fine with you being selfish with your money. I literally just said no, that no, to no. you, and I'm definitely saying, is that the best use of that five thousand dollars? Objectively, it's not. But I will happily do it anyway. Actually, I I won't say objectively it's not. Maybe it is. I don't fucking know. Uh, but I'm not counting on it. Uh, and I, and I will uh, happily be selfish and self-serving and all kinds of shit. Cause I do things every day that aren't the best use of my, I could just eat a, a nutrient gruel and stop trying to have food that I like, uh, that would be more efficient and then use that money for charity. And yet I'm going to keep letting whatever I could drink soil it. That's right. Uh, <laughs> all, all right, guys. I, I really, I really do appreciate the, the elements of, uh, advice there. I'm, I'll definitely incorporate it into Sure. my future endeavors Appreciate i do it, guys. for the record whatever you do yeah tell me i want to know follow up yeah let's let us know how it goes because if you're right and i'm wrong cool i'd love to know yeah but quite um, frankly I mean, to be honest with I you i'm it. definitely going to sit down and yeah i mean I, i'm genuinely hearing I, I hope you guys realize that when you hear that the reason why i called specifically you two human beings is because one i'm a you have an internet presence that allows me to understand your your thought process and your opinion is extremely valid in the sense that if you do not understand what I'm trying to convey, then many people aren't going to understand what I'm trying to convey because you guys, I mean, this is your field of, of, of thought. You, you, you consider these thoughts in depth. So yeah. I, I really do appreciate it, guys. I'll, I'll, I'll take into consideration. As you're thinking about it, I'm going to add a Patreon tier. It's $5,000 and the tier is called a picture of the profit. Uh, and so as you're deciding what to do with that money, I'll make that available. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not really, I'm not really going to do it. I might have for the meme, but I'm not really going to. Anyway, thank you for calling. For and uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity for me to, for no less than five to 10 minutes, have the phrase magic underwear, LOL on the screen this whole time. So thank you. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Thanks, LR.
Yep. Thanks. Uh, I think, man, shit. We've got 16 minutes. I don't want to. I don't want to go over on. Okay, you're, just, you're, rushed, you're going off to Aaron's thing, right? I think my my migraine is getting worse. I think I'm going to bed after, but uh, but I still don't want to encroach on Aaron's thing. Well, we got uh, we got two theists. Let's see if we can get the theists that. in before we're out of time. Yeah, let's let's do that. Uh, Kevin in Southern California, which is not what the thing says. Let me try and fix it. There we go. Kevin in Southern California, you want to know which sects of Islam are okay? Missionary. Yeah. Oh, that's I, I grew up a couple of weeks ago and asked about Christianity, so I'm just I kind of felt bad because I left Islam out. <laughs> uh, there is no version of Christianity that I wouldn't challenge a Christian on. However, there are very progressive Christians that I w- grant a lower priority to, uh, and people who I like very much who are still technically Christians, and I don't I don't go out of my way to challenge them or call them to secular repentance. Uh, and I would feel the same way about Islam. I am not aware of a sect of Islam because I don't think you're allowed to call a sect of Islam progressive, uh, but I'm not aware of a specific progressive sect of Islam. However, I know individual Muslims who, uh, I had an old friend I used to party with who would literally like get one drink in him and then just start going, fuck Allah, we party all night. And he was, he was from Iraq and he was awesome. <laughs> Uh, and so that guy seemed fine to me and was a great co cook up. But other than that, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, I'm sure there are, I mean, this really easy. I'm sure there are plenty of Christians and Muslims in the world who I would find to be wonderful people. That has nothing to do with their actual religion. I'm not aware of any version or sect of Christianity or any version or sect of Islam that I don't have serious objections to, not the least of which is. Is it true? Are there different sects that are more harmful? Uh, Shia Sunni, yes. Um, you know, when you when you get into you know Westboro Baptist Church uh, and and fundamentalist evangelical preachers who are you know anti woman and anti gay versus the the rainbow gay friendly Christian church in San Francisco, um, obviously there's differences. And yet, as long as they're still pointing to the same Bible and saying that they're the same things that are in there are true or the same Quran and advocating for those things as well, as long as they are making people servile and uh, forcing people to wear certain clothing and behave in a certain way because they feel that, you know, men and women can't be held responsible for their reactions or there's any such thing as, you know, honor and dishonoring a family. Um, if they're requiring someone to pray five times a day or be outcast, I have a problem with all of those things. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense to me. Um, that one of the things I always get hung up on is like seeking God versus believing in God. Um, where I, I think it makes sense to look for God, but I don't think it makes sense that you have to flick your lights on off, off and on three times to somehow appease God, you know. Um, I get what you're saying, Kevin, and mm-hmm. and for the most part, I think I agree. But let me ask this. Do you think it's a worthwhile endeavor to seek ghosts or to seek fairies or to seek uh, jinn? Um, yeah, well, I mean, in a way, in a way, like if you were writing like a, a fiction book, you know, <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, okay. people who aren't really ready to dismiss the idea of God versus people who are ready to dismiss the idea of leprechaun. I mean, if, uh, if you, I could also, you could also say it's a worthwhile endeavor if you're looking into how you can con people. But I'm saying, as an element to understanding truth, I don't see what the value is in looking for God anymore. Why, why would I have to look for God? Why yeah. isn't God readily available? I mean, if I were God, nobody would fucking ever have to look for me. Yeah, and that's, I mean, by that's, the way, part that's, the by the way, an entire mm-hmm. chapter in my book that may never come out. It's called If I Were God, and that chapter is a serious issue. Kevin, with that with that not being the topic you called for, uh, and because we're doing things with time right now, can I ask, call back yeah. Wednesday or Sunday, think about the question, but also when you call back Wednesday or Sunday, call uh, try and call closer to the beginning of the show if you can, and we're also okay. going to want to talk about, because you said you are a theist, so we'll want to know why you're yep. a theist as well, and let's let's do that. Well, can I give you something to think about so that sure. uh, when I do call back, yep. it'll be a little all right. I want to talk about the Einstein controversy because it comes up in chat all the time. 
the and Einstein I also to mention, Yeah, because, you know, people, they say he was an atheist, he was a theist. I think he was an atheist, but he just talked about theism, but a lot of the stuff... He, he almost said certainly was, like, was a pantheist, but we can talk about it when... If you want us to talk about Einstein, too, we'll talk about it Wednesday or Sunday. I'll, I'll point out and that as soon as you bring it up, as soon as you bring Einstein up, I'm going to ask you what difference did it make what Einstein or anybody yeah. else believed, because what an individual believed about God has no bearing on what's true or what's reasonable. I got it. I got it. All right. So the last thing I want to mention is like, uh, I think it was two weeks ago, you said that you had not uh, seen Professor Dave's channel and he has a really good book on um, conspiracy theory debunking. I think you guys check it out. Okay. And that's everything. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. I, w I will say with that last note he gave, I became even more curious how Kevin is a, uh, is a theist. If uh, he's consuming Professor Dave's book about conspiracy theories, but I, we'll have to wait to find out. Uh, Wesley, in, and I'm very sorry, Wesley, because this sh this call is probably also going to get cut short. But uh, you know, hopefully we can have you back maybe earlier in the show if it has to go longer. But give us uh, give us the the quick version of what you wanted to call about. Well, right now, um, you know, Jesus said it is time. Satan said, "Sad and delicious." Satan said, I will turn and toss you violently like a ball. Don't tell the vision in your brains. Uh, Jesus said, tell the vision. No time to talk. Allah, you want war. I asked Jesus to heal two teeth in all of your mouth. So the proof has been in your mouth for oh, years Oh, I remember now. you. Fuck off. And, uh, okay. Goodbye. Yeah. Go fuck yourself. Uh, well, that gives us time I'm, for James. I'm lost, but you can explain it later. Yeah, it's a person who calls in and just tells us we're wrong. We know we're wrong. He's prophesied this. We know that he prophesied this, that he has the truth. The truth is in our teeth. It's in our mouths. We He healed us. It's a bunch of just nonsense, pro, nonsense proselytization. If you ask him to prove anything, it's you know it. And that's why he said, yeah, when I told him I remember you, fuck off. It's, it's not literally worth anybody's time. Uh, but that does give us time to quickly answer James' question in Texas. Uh, James, what up? Hey, guys. Um, hey, Matt, a uh, quick question. I, yeah. I watched your, your debate with, um, uh, with Destiny on bodily autonomy argument, and I love the argument. It, it seems to me to be the closest thing to what might be an objective argument in a whole, a whole sea of subjectivity. Um, my question is, is, is there a point when bodily autonomy is either kind of granted, bestowed, or, you know, is that based on agency? And if so, how could we keep from that turning into some, well, this is when life begins argument? I'm just curious. It's really easy. You can, if you want to, say, okay, I'm going to grant bodily autonomy from the instant that the um, sperm invades the egg. So now what you have with someone who's pregnant is two people who both have bodily autonomy and that fertilized egg with its bodily autonomy still does not have the right to use the other person's body without their consent. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay, so, um, so w with that, and I'm on your side. This is, this is me trying to figure out how to how to kind of defend part of that argument against somebody who would say, well, when does the thing inside the person have bodily autonomy? They don't. I just told you, just right? that. I oh, just yeah. told you that you could be granted at fertilization okay. and it won't change it. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Okay. Fair enough. Why do I, why, yeah. why do I feel like I, I, I answered a question and nobody listened? I, I, James, I think you just missed it. Maybe well, go back and watch the call again. Cause it, it is literally what he, what he answered. It literally, you asked, well, when I, does they get bodily autonomy? He says, as soon as you want it, but that doesn't mean you got to violate I, no, their hang autonomy. On, with hang, yours. On, hang on, hang on, hang on. I, 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 James, I, I, are, are you, are you asking when I think we should grant bodily autonomy? No, that, no, that's not what I'm, I'm, okay. That's then I don't understand the well. question. Yeah. So, uh, if I if we have just a second, let me try and, and rephrase and forgive for me it. for totally fucking it all up. Um, You're good. So if if so if a if the bodily autonomy argument goes goes to to the mother, which absolutely hundred percent agree, then there's no bodily autonomy for fetus, no matter what. Cool. 
No. If, no. That, if someone were to say, okay, sorry. Yeah, I'm, you're, I'm, you're, I'm missing it. You're, you're, you're missing the connection, and it, and it may just have been... I am. Who knows what it what it is? I think if you just watch the call back again, you'll get it. Matt, if you want, you can restate it. You're welcome to. It's I, your, I haven't finished because yeah. we get we might as well. Too, I, go ahead. I, it, it's okay. Like I said, I I was I was in a discussion with somebody who's very much pro pro life, and and I was I was making a strong reference to this argument, and because I really believe in it, and what they threw back was, well, why does autonomy only seem to go one way? if you can quote unquote grant life at, at any point you wanted to. And I didn't have a great answer for that. Autonomy, I was autonomy, help autonomy, auto, self, one person. Autonomy always goes one way. It goes to the individual in question. If in fact you have a pregnant person and a person inside of them and you grant both the pregnant person and that fertilized clump of cells 100% rights to bodily autonomy that still does not give the fetus the right to use that other person's body without their consent. Consent must be granted, given, in order for that fetus to... It's not that it goes one way, it's that it can't go the other way. The person who's pregnant say can't say, I force you to stay in me. If so, there would be no fucking miscarriages. Okay, I got you. I I, I apologize yep. if no, you're good. That's, it's if fine. I, if I phrase it in, just, in a way to. I'm sorry. Now I don't think that we should be giving fertilized cells bodily autonomy or considering them persons, but no. that's a personal no, issue. No, of course not. That's, I, that, that, that's yeah, separate. Of course. That's a personal issue that's separate from bodily autonomy. You can grant bodily autonomy to anyone and everyone. You can. I can grant bodily autonomy to this thing of tums, and it would still never get the right to, to use my body without my consent. Right. I mean, conceptually, it could also be be said, if you if someone were to grant autonomy to a fetus, the 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 assumption would be that fetus probably doesn't want to, you know, might not. Well, doesn't we, matter. There's no point. Matter. We don't know. There's no point in even. It doesn't no matter what the fetus, fetus wants. Did, okay, did, exactly. is it possible for this thing jar of tums to want anything? No, definitely not. Then, then the want is irrelevant. I could grant this jar of Tums complete bodily autonomy, and it would never get to use my body without. I feel like I should be advertising Tums right I, now. See, I was going to go with something like, all right, James, James, <laughs> do you, up, uh, put, James, put do you, do you agree that there. Matt and I are both autonomous individuals? Absolutely. Let's yeah. say that Matt puts his hand in my mouth, and we find out that the only thing that's keeping Matt alive is his hand in my mouth. Does he still have right. the right to keep it there if I don't want it there? Just because he'll die if he takes no, it out? No, definitely not. Exactly, it's, because it's, I, it's my and autonomy and being violated. Right. We're both autonomous. Right. We both have autonomy. Right. I'm the one being violated. It's your agency that grants you the ability to express that autonomy. Here's doesn't what matter do. what grants you the ability. Doesn't, two, it just, yeah. yeah, two hours from now, yeah. we're going to go live yeah. again, and I'm going to put Matt's hand in my mouth. I'm going to go over to Matt's place, <laughs> and we're going to do the experiment. No, I'm just kidding. We're not doing that. But anyway, James, I are, hope that's clear. Are you coming over, though? No, I feel like shit. I do. I I'm going uh, right to bed tomorrow. Guess I won't be putting anything right. in Jimmy's mouth today. <laughs> Damn, I, that would have been the highlight. I saw uh, it coming. Phrasing, bada sure. bing, James. Last words, and then we gotta go. All right. Hey guys, thanks a lot for. Uh, yeah, thanks so much, guys. Have a great, have a great day. A great show as always. Cool. Thanks, James. Thanks, James. Matt, By actual way, last words. Know. Go ahead. Tums, Tums are antacid tablets that I keep handy because one of my medications will sometimes give me acid reflux. Although not today. I feel actually really fine. I don't have any additional last words. I've got some uh, stuff to do, but I'm thrilled that, you know, I mean, we had oodles and gobs of people calling in and participating. I really want more and better theists. I really, please do not make this the thing where every show starts off with, let's get the tinfoil hat brigade calling in who don't understand the basics. Um, <laughs> and and ended almost that way with fucking Wesley. Yeah. But we had the we had one great theist call, one meh, one and then terrible. I have a question for you though. Mm -hmm. What shows are coming up tomorrow and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday? Evolution with Forrest and RN on Skep Talk tomorrow. That's Monday. Holy fuck, that's like a nine hour show at least. I know. I'm preparing. I'll have I'm taking ibuprofen in advance. I can't wait. It's going to be good. Uh, and then on Tuesday, I'll be joined on Hostility by Eve Was Framed. On Wednesday, Ooh. Matt will be joined by... 
Oh, there isn't anybody yet, but I'm okay. waiting to hear from somebody. And then uh, Thursday, I believe, is Arden, and it's it might be Ben, but it might be Katie. But then there's somebody else they're trying to get in, and Joe. So Thursday's show is the one that we always seem to plan Wednesday night. Uh, by Wednesday the night, we'll thing. know. <laughs> the important thing is tune in tomorrow for Forrest and Aaron, and yeah. we will make sure that they update you on what's coming Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, if we have any more information. Exactly. Now I let you all go. We end the stream, uh, and this will auto redirect to Aaron Rod's Book of Mormon stream. Go check that out. I'll try and stop by at the beginning, but I'm probably not going to stick around. Uh, I really feel like shit. So thank you, everybody. Have a good night. And I also have Tom's by my bed as well as hot sauce, and they're related. That's true.